What's up guys, I'm Jesse from Jesse's Garage and Adventures and today I'm excited to say that Lytime, or Lee Time, however you say it, has sent me their 500 amp battery monitor. This battery monitor includes a shunt, the monitor, the wiring, everything you need. All you gotta do is install it, program it, and then you're good to go. It'll tell you exactly how much SOC your battery's at, how much you have left, how much time it'll take to dissipate the battery at whatever you're currently using. Super useful, I'm super happy that they sent this to me and let's get on into the install. Sorry for the interruption once again. Before we get into the install, I wanted to say that I am a Lee Time affiliate and I also have a discount code. I will leave the discount code. I wanna say it's uh, JGA. It should get you something off the top. I'm not sure what. I think it kind of varies depending on what promos they're running. But uh, yeah, please check out my link down below and use my promo code that might save you guys a couple dollars. All right, let's get to the install. One thing I would like to start off by saying is this does not take a lot of tools. It may take whatever it takes to disconnect the battery from your posts. A wire crimper set. Um, you got to have the terminal has got a pretty big uh, lug on it. So you've got to have a pretty big terminal. So you may have to go get some uh, like terminal ends that fit. I'll show you guys what I used. So I use this terminal kit right here. It's a kit that I bought off of Amazon. I can link it if you guys are interested. Um, I use their biggest lugs that they've got in the kit. These fit over the shunt studs just fine. And then other than that, it includes a small screwdriver that you'll use to connect the positive battery wire. And there's really not much else to it. Okay, and now let's take a minute to go over the wiring. So what you do, I got one single battery. So I took my main ground coming off the battery we're going down and it's going to the B negative on this little uh, shunt block. And then the B positive runs back to your main ground that you're using for uh, like whatever to power your loads. So the main thing that you need to understand is that all of your charging and power has to go through this. So uh, originally I had it wired up to where I had two grounds going into this, one from the DC to DC charger and then one going to like this ground over here. So I had to consolidate them all over to here and then make a jumper to right there. And then you just, you know, mount your plate, which this is a quick 3D print I did. I don't like it. I'm gonna reprint it mainly because you can see here it's squishy and it doesn't really have a really positive hold. So I gotta redesign that a little bit, but we'll get there. And then you hook up the wire. There's a plug in the back here. And then there's one battery positive wire that's just gotta go to your, you know, 12 volts positive. That's really all there is to it. Um, I'm gonna clean up the wire a little bit, but that's it. So what's going on here is I actually already had it installed and part of the installation is setting your max battery voltage and setting the min. And uh, at this point I was, I had already set the min voltage, so I was just letting the battery recharge. So if you're installing this, you'll want to do that while the battery is at 100% SOC and then you can start into the next clip that I'm going to show you guys, but I didn't record that. All right, guys. So once you've got everything installed, you need to go through and actually set it up. You press and hold this button. You got your capacity, your full, your low, your power off. You do that for a few seconds and it'll go into a setting menu that looks like this. You set your battery, which mine's 100 amp hours. Then you set your full voltage, which they have it right here. It is set to 14.2. Going through editing this, realizing that I, I don't know what I did, but I messed up a lot. Um, so I got to kind of do some jump cuts and stuff. But the process to setting up the battery monitor is while the battery is at 100% SOC, you set your max voltage. And then you discharge the battery till the battery's BMS cuts off, which it will do that at a certain point. And then you set the minimum voltage and then you continue to discharge it until it shuts down and then you set the shutdown voltage. It's also got alarms and then some other percentage, which I'm assuming is a percentage of the available amp hours. I'm not certain on that bit. But yeah, I just wanted to apologize. I didn't do the greatest job of recording this and I'm realizing it now. All right, guys, I have drained this, I'm trying to get it to where you can see the screen. Um, what I've been doing is I've been running my little air pump off of it, just nonstop, over into my C10 tank, and then I've just got a metered leak on the tank. Um, got a little fan on the pump to try and keep it all cool. So, 
It says right now it'll take another 39 minutes to deplete the last little bit. I'm going to kick the pump on. But the thing you got to do is when the battery hits the low voltage cutoff, you need to set this to your low. Which you and then that correlates with uh, step three here which is just draining it, then you set the low, and then once we will get that cut off, we will continue to try and run it until it dies, and then we will fire it up and charge it for a while. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it all charged up tonight, but we'll see. So as you can see here, the actual low wasn't, I mean, it was a good estimate, but it wasn't completely done. So we're going to run this till it dies. And it might have just shut off right there. No. Nope. You can hear the pump is getting a little weaker though. Honestly, these lithium batteries are kind of insane how much power they can put out. I cannot believe it's still going. You guys can hear that the pump is getting less happy. I also just got done welding up my axles for the one ton swap. I welded the tubes because 14 bolts are known to spin tubes in the housing. Oh, and it shut off. So I might have to charge it just a tiny amount to get this to reset and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so I was running it too aggressively with that air pump and that killed it, so we're gonna press. I just had to like kinda jump start it, not really. I just started the truck up and then I put my LiPo 4 battery charger on it just for a split second and that triggered it back on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press and hold down. All right, we're gonna fire the truck back up. The DC to DC charger should kick in and we will let it charge at least mostly to 100. So as you can see here, the DC to DC charger is indeed working. Um, I don't know why that light is pulsating like that, that's pretty interesting. But yeah, we'll let her idle for a little while, I might take it for a drive and you know, just give it some run time. So something else that you can do is when you're in the settings menu, you can actually continue to scroll around, there's an alarm. So I would like to set the alarm at... Um, I'm going to do 10 amp hours. Attention, a percentage. I'm assuming that's a battery percentage. We'll enter that. We'll do... Uh, well, yeah, we'll leave that one alone. So after rereading the user manual, the attention is after the battery completes a cycle, one complete charge and discharge cycle, the capacity will automatically change according to its ratio. So what I believe this is, is it's telling you the usable amount of battery that you have left. So over time, batteries tend to degrade. So like say you get 100 amp hours when you first buy it. Over years and different discharge cycles, you will, you know, that the percentage will just decrease. So you may only get 80 amp hours or 70. Um, these batteries are made to last thousands of cycles, and they've got a five-year warranty. So I'm not concerned with anything like that. But I just wanted to explain it to you. All right, guys, I just got this off the 3D printer. Um, I made a new version that is much more sturdy. The first version of the screen holder that I made flexes a lot right here, so I thickened it all up. I increased the infill to 50% and then changed the pattern to a zigzag pattern to try and get more, uh, like I guess, stable. If you guys are like me and like to DIY a lot of stuff, a 3D printer is amazing. There's tons of things that I have printed on the 3D printer between like mock-up pieces and like full done things as like as you can see that this thing's a pretty good quality piece and if you guys are willing to spend some time and make the 3d printer set up all correct you can get some really nice quality pieces out of ender 3 i think this thing cost me like 180 bucks like five years ago so there is one thing that i'm slightly concerned about swapping this new holder onto the monitor and that is we're going to see if the monitor's got some sort of memory function 
because I've got it all calibrated. I've done full voltage, zero voltage, done the whole charge. Bug zapper's going off. But um, I'm slightly concerned that I'm going to unplug it and it's going to lose all its memory. I guess what I'm going to do is probably take some pictures of everything as it sits. That way, if it does lose its memory, I can just set it back and hopefully it'll work. We'll see. I would also like to show you guys this. Um, this was fully charged earlier based on the solar panel. Um, it's showing 18 amps because I started the truck up briefly to move the truck. But that will go away once the voltage stabilizes and the DC to DC charger kicks off. Because as you can see, that's down there running. But what I wanted to show you is that... I mean, this has been running at least since the sun went down and it's at you know 96 amp hours so it is maintaining itself going up during the day and then dropping at night and as you can see the dc to dc charger just kicked off so the refrigerator is pulling just a little bit um this button here causes the backlight but yeah we're gonna pop this out i'll show you guys the difference in the mounts and then we'll swap them so this is the two different mounts that I'm using, that I made. This was my test mount, and as you can see, it's not very square anymore. Um, this is held in by some little tabs that they just overcome this. It's too thin, I didn't use enough infill, super flexible. So what we're gonna do is that should drop right in there. And that's super firm, fits great, look at that. And then what I did was I made two elongated holes here. I've got two holes drilled into this, which this is actually like fiberglass material, believe it or not. It's not like plastic. But yeah, or maybe it's some sort of reinforced plastic, but it's a strong. And then we're just gonna run some self-tappers back into those holes and plug it back in. You gotta leave yourself, you know, a pass through for the wire and we'll try it out. All right, this is mounted up. It's pretty secure. We're gonna run the wires through, connect it back into the back of this and slide it in. We'll see if it all works. Okay, so the settings all came right back and we'll go back into the settings mode to show you guys how you can adjust some of these. You press and hold this button. You got your capacity, your full, your low, your power off. But yeah, it's all super easy. Well guys, that's all there is to it. It's really not very hard. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you can get it done. Um, let's just go over some main points you've got to you know, remember while you're doing it. If you've got a single battery like I do, you need to run it in series in the ground. So that means uh, nothing else can be run in parallel. So all the power exiting the battery through the negative terminal has to run through that shunt. The instructions tell you which post to wire to the battery and which ones to wire to your load. Um, super easy, you can't miss it. There's a positive plus battery on the shunt that you need to run to the positive post on the battery. Again, super easy, you guys can't mess that up. Your biggest challenge will probably be finding a place to mount the monitor. Um, you might not have a 3D printer, it might not look as good, but who cares, as long as it works. One thing I will say, Lee Time, if you're watching, please make this thing Bluetooth compatible. If you make it Bluetooth compatible, I'll get one. I mean, I already got one, obviously, right? But I would love to see this thing Bluetooth. If it could Bluetooth, it would just, or maybe not even Bluetooth, but maybe run two of them. Make, make, make a mini screen so I could run it to the front of my truck and have it in the dash and be able to monitor it from my truck as well. But yeah, just thoughts. But either way, I like it a lot. It was a really easy install. Um, and I will say that they sent this to me. I didn't purchase it just for all fairness they've actually they sponsored my entire battery build and they've also sent me out to overland expo so lead time has been great to me and i just want you guys to not be under the impressions that you know this is not what it is um they have definitely sponsored all this but thank you guys for that if you're watching and thank you guys for watching the video um without you watchers i wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff and or at least if I did, it'd be a lot harder. It'd be a whole lot slower. Um, since starting a YouTube thing, I have sped up everything. I'm working on a Dana 60 here. I've got a 14 bolt in the back. I've gone on a motorcycle trip to Wyoming, which that was going to happen regardless whether I was on the YouTubes or not. But it all definitely 
makes it it helps and it makes it harder at the same time because I don't have as much time as I used to. Um, I am a very busy man these days. But thanks for watching, and uh, if you would like, please remember to give me a like, a share, subscribe, follow along for more content. Uh, you know, have a good one, guys.